like to call the Mama City Council meeting for February 2nd. Uh, could you give us a roll call, Phyllis? Councilor Carey? Here. Councilor Guthrie? Here. Councilor Johnson? Here. Councilor Milligan? Here. Councilor Schaefer is absent. Mayor Pro Tem Silbernagel? Here. And Mayor Oberst is excused. All rise for the flag salute. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, thanks. We've got one item on our consent calendar this evening, and that is our minutes from the January 19th, 2016 council meeting. There are no questions or changes, I would entertain a motion for approval. I move approval. Second. It's been moved and, and seconded that we approve the consent agenda for this evening. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thank you so much. Okay, pres presentation from ODOT. First thing, thank you for being here. Thank you. Good evening. Thank you for inviting the Oregon Department of Transportation here tonight to present our Oregon 99W Hoffman to Monmouth South City Limits project. My name is Julie Ganung, I'm the project leader. And my, oh, my name is Tim Potter, I'm the ODOT area manager. And after my presentation of the Highway 99 <coughs> project, um, Tim will be presenting an overview of the Highway 51 Heavily to Main Street project. So the key project elements of the Highway 99 project include pavement resurfacing, including rebuilding the pavement structure at the Main Street intersection, upgrading and building new accessible pedestrian ramps at all of the main intersections throughout the city limits. These will be meeting the, new, the latest Americans with Disability Act standards. We will be also be installing sidewalks that are separated from the highway with planter strips. There will be bike lanes and striping of the highway from Church to Madrona included in this project. And also a continuous center left turn lane to improve safety. I'll be going into a lot of these elements in more detail as the presentation progresses. So here's a typical section of the future <coughs> highway from Church to Madrona. You'll notice six foot sidewalks on either side, then the five foot planted buffer with trees, six foot bike lanes, 12 foot travel lane, and a 16 foot center turn lane. Now I'd like to compare and contrast what the highway will look like before and after the project. So this is looking south at Main Street today. And then, so go back to, oh, go back to the before condition. So looking south today, we notice that we don't have consistent planter strips. There are some here and there. Some of them are on the back of the sidewalk. Some of them are between the highway and sidewalk. Um, no bike lanes are striped today. Okay, let's go on to the the after image. So here's a simulation of the streetscape, basically a more complete urban streetscape after the project. Notice the bike lanes, the planted areas, the trees, um, new signals at the at the intersection of Maine. So quite a quite a striking difference. Now I'd like to discuss with you the bicycle improvements and connections that are a part of this project. So on the northern limits of the project, starting at Church Street, we'll be adding bike lanes. 
For northbound riders approaching Church Street, there'll be guide signing, instructing them to merge over into that center turn lane and then onto the regional path, what's highlighted with the yellow arrow there. They want to continue northbound. Less experienced riders could use the crosswalk instead. On the next slide, um, the southern bicycle lanes, or the southern limits of the bicycle lanes, will end at Gwynn Street, matching into the existing highway shoulders. Gwynn Street is close to the south city limit and the end of our project, so that seemed like the natural terminus for us. Um, we've heard that through the Monmouth engaged city process, there was identified a high priority for bicycle and pedestrian friendly townscape. And we heard that there was a committee formed to focus on that issue. And we would very much like to coordinate and partner with that committee as we move forward with the design of our project. So if you could let us know how we can make those contacts and start that coordination process, we would appreciate it. So moving on to the topic of landscaping, another key element in the project, there's basically two central items of landscaping that have been identified, trees and ground cover. The, the trees that we've started talking about with our landscape architect and the city staff have included red maple and purple ash. Both of these, or either of these, could offer a nice fall color accents along the street. Um, it could be possible to use both of these in combination using one as a highlight tree at certain key intersections or to choose just one tree and use it continuously along the length of the project. So moving on, I'd like to talk about the other key element of the landscape, ground cover. We've heard that the city has a strong interest in having grass as the main ground cover and we showed that in the simulation earlier. An alternative to grass could also be a low-growing shrub like kinnikinick, which is a native plant that is usually maybe an average of six inches tall, has a red berry. This is a close-up image of it. And also an image of a streetscape where kinnikinick was used as the primary ground cover. And you see it just looks kind of like a tufted grass. Um, in choosing one or the other of these ground covers, it helps to consider things like irrigation and water needs, maintenance, and so forth. We look forward to continuing to coordinate with the city staff and other members of the city as we move forward with making a decision about what to include in our plans over the next few months. Cost and schedule, these are usually key elements that everybody wants to know about on a project. So our current cost estimate is 8.9 million. Originally, we had a budget of 5.1 million. The difference being that this project started as a break off or a sister project to a larger corridor preservation project that started at the south city limits of Amity all the way to the south city limits of Monmouth. We realized early on that the schedule um, to include all of the work in Monmouth would delay the rest <coughs> of the project because we knew there would be some right of way acquisition within the city. So there was a decision made a couple years ago to separate those two projects and move forward with um, this as a separate project from Hoffman Roads to the south city limits of, of Monmouth. So there's some cost savings from that other project which will be transferred into this one and there's also a small gap in funding right now that we're looking to fill. Um, our design timeline has basically basically started early last year and will be continuing until September of next year. So our anticipated year of construction is 2018. We're pretty confident we can meet that schedule because we have adequate time for each of the phases including right of way which I'll talk about next in our next steps. There we go. So right now the team is developing preliminary plans. These are approximately 60% level design. They help us identify things like utility impacts, um, lands, key landscaping decisions, so forth. Um, we, are, we also are gonna be starting business and public outreach to make sure that more people understand the project and the timeline. 
And thirdly, we are starting the right of way acquisition process. Um, we're starting the appraisal process this winter. And I wanted to just give you an overview that we've identified a total of 44 right of way files. Most of those are utility or construction easements. A few of those are sliver acquisitions and there's no relocations anticipated. So I'm welcome any comments, questions you have. Uh, maybe we'll start with questions from the council. Let's go ahead. I'll, I'll start. You say that the, the center lane stops at Church Street? Yes. Okay. So everybody coming south then there'd still be a bottleneck there because there's a tremendous turn lane on the church street off 99 to to the east that's what i'm asking if it stops there so you say people heading southbound, southbound. you're wondering if they can they get in a turn pocket to turn on to church yeah on the church because Maybe otherwise that it stops might it. be included i'll i'll check we may have a pocket there or may be able to include that and that would help the bicyclers to to move over to that lane to, to get back on the bicycle path. That's the thing I saw in your history. Uh, I, I got a lot of questions, but anybody else wants to start? Keep going. Yeah. Okay. On 51, going. when you go in the corner 9951 right now, mm -hmm. we're not talking about the pro other project. What is going to be the width of that street on 51 so trucks can access to turn off 99 on the 51 without running over the curb or going into three different lanes? So we are making significant improvements in the turn radius and curb radiuses especially as you head east mm -hmm. so the easternmost segment is designed for the the standard highway vehicle the wb67 i believe it is so it'd be like six it's the big truck okay. like the two unit truck that can um, make that turn I actually it's a, a long single trailer long but it's the 54 foot right. trailer. And, and the width and it'll be a bike lane <coughs> on that corner right there will be on 51. I need to I need to check okay that. but I mean that's what I thought that was part of this project I mean right now 9951 at the corners that yeah was, that we was, are definitely there's only a, there's only a two foot bike lane there now I know we're improving all the crosswalks I'll have to look and see if our bike if we have bike lanes on 51 well, no the bike lanes on 99 the bike lanes are on 99, 99 and on 51 at the corner the bike lanes are only two feet wide on one side <coughs> And nothing on the other side on 51. On 51, I, I don't believe we will. Yeah. That would be a direct well, I mean, transition, but we won't be going down 51. Yeah, in, we don't go very line. far, more yeah. than the driveway of Burgerville. Mm -hmm. Okay, but that's what I mean. That's that's what I'm asking. That's 80 feet or 80 but feet. But I will check that for you and get back okay, to that's you. Okay, that's because I ride a bike a lot, and there is no bike lane on 51. Mm -hmm. So you you could be the traffic. You know, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that one is. Uh, you have a we have a crosswalk at Madrona right now. Mm -hmm. That's that's dangerous because it has a certain center turn lane. In. You get halfway across, you have to stop, and make sure you don't get wiped out from traffic going either north or south. Uh, and the question was that if you put blinking lights on there for a pedestrian crossing, you know, to press the button that you're going to cross, like you see in Bend and Salem and every place else, that it was too close to traffic. Up. I have another question to ask. Also on Powell, there. It's hard to go across the street on Powell. It, it, could there be a crosswalk across there, about 99 Powell? And that's to the, that's to the, uh, it would be to the south of Church Street. Just throw out some questions Church there. Mm -hmm. Jackson's too close to, to 51, but Powell is two blocks, and it's about two blocks to the it's crosswalk. A, it, it's a street now? Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yeah, Legally, well, legally that is a, a, a yeah, legal but crossing, but an actual striped crosswalk. A striped crosswalk. Uh, we'd have to. I don't know why we wouldn't, but it, we'll have to talk with the traffic folks to find out why. Yes. I'd like to throw that out. There's several. Certainly, there's others yeah, too. Hmm? Uh, the other one south of uh, Main Street, 51. Yeah, there's, there's 51, Jackson, but then there's Jackson, but that, that that's too <clears> close. But I was trying to go to Powell was mm -hmm. the next one to try to make a breakup so you could cross the highway without having to go clear back to the left. So if it's 7 30 in the morning you can't hardly get across the highway well, that'll be all. and kids cross not always hit the crosswalk so understand okay. can, well, can we'll i just that. reiterate those and maybe piece them out one at a time so it sounds like on the north side of 51 coming down yes. uh, royal has concerns about making sure that there is opposing left turn lanes at church street 
block to the south, that there's a striped lane at the next street to the south, which is Powell. Striped crosswalk. Striped crosswalk, excuse me, and Powell. That um, once we hit 51, that there's a continuation of designated bike travel both, both to the north, south, and east, west on 51. And then something that's been a, a, a continual topic is then two blocks to the south of Main Street on a street called Madrona. There was a painted crosswalk there. It hasn't seemed to do much in terms of uh, visibility for pedestrians crossing. There have been numerous requests made to get some sort of active lighting system, a flashing light or those triggered beacons, I forget what they're called, RFF or something. RRFB. Yeah, flashing yeah. beacons. You got it. And so we've been told before that those are an impossibility because of their proximity to the lights. Yes, that's what we've heard from our traffic engineer. The queuing can go back there sometimes. And so okay. so we, I, think that, I think that the council and the, we've had citizen comment on this as well would be interested if we can't do elevated lighting to look into either a curb level or street level embedded lighting. We're seeing a lot now with actual lit crosswalks. Just, just cross. visibility lighting type. Okay. Exactly. Just anything. The trouble is when you're when there's a car facing in the turning lane, turning left onto Madrona, heading south, and someone's trying to cross it, on the southbound traffic. There's no way they can see um. anything. Um, and then it's just, mm -hmm. just I turn on every day. I live right over there, so it's scary. So it'd be great if that could be triggered, but if it were a simple always on after dusk type of situation, that'd be better than what we've got <coughs> now. Okay. Yeah, we'll ask those questions. Did I forget anything? Yeah, there are solutions to to, <coughs> to that kind of thing. Um, I mean, they're all over the state uh, where, you know, the state highways that have the activated, emergency activated, they're fairly close to intersections, you know, Corvallis, south of Corvallis, uh, Baker City, um, Highway 7 coming in there right just before you turn on the Main Street, uh, any number of the same kinds of things in uh, Florence. Um, one of the things that I wonder about, because that is a major concern of ours, and I know it's not yeah. your deal. And no, we don't we've heard about it, and we've started to look into it, I know, and but we will continue down that path further with these questions. Yeah, because, and, and it might be that one of the requirements is, which would which would impact what you're doing is there there may be a need for sort of an island you know pedestrian island in the middle of that i don't know what the regs are on that or the even best practices um and and if that is the case then you know i think the city would like to weigh in on would we you know are we so concerned about getting some sort of a of a you know pedestrian activated warning of that and that we would be willing to have a, you know, halfway house for pedestrians yeah. cross. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. Because I think that may be one of the, the wickets that's sticky. Yeah. yeah, I think what we'll have to do is just sit down with our traffic folks and say, okay, here, here, show us the suite of what, sure, what, what's available, and then <coughs> tick off the reasons why we can or cannot do that, sure. and then yeah. we'd have to come back here with that. Yeah. What is the next best? I think we're asking that on a design point. What are the absolutely, next absolutely, this, build, this is know. absolutely the right place, yeah. right time. It's yeah. all on, just mm -hmm. on paper now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Well, yeah. We're really excited about the project and, and really glad you're here, frankly. Uh, you, you mentioned a number of times uh, that you heard the city had this interest or that. Are you in communication with our. Mainly people? with uh, Scott McClure and Russell Cooper. Uh -huh. I've been meeting with them over the past few months. Good. Emailing Good. regularly about questions that come up sometimes at your meetings here and trying to get answers for you. Yeah, I think we're, we're confident you'll get get information from those guys. Um, that's good. Uh, you, you made some uh, under your next steps. You said no relocations. Did you mean no utility relocations or? No, what I meant route? was we have no full right of way acquisitions, which would require any business or oh, home see, to I relocate. Sure. Sure. Um, we do anticipate some utility relocations. <coughs> so we're still working through what what those might be. You know, and and uh, um, you're a little unclear on this, which is fine, but boy, that, that left turn, that traffic left turn pocket, as you call it, coming south at Church. Um, 
you know, because we've got now police station, uh, you know, on one way that we'll need a left hand turn into that, it sounds like. And anything coming south, there's an elementary school there. Mm -hmm. And there's a ton of people going to the elementary school, including school buses and a variety of other things. So is, is that a marked school across the state? It is. Okay. Yeah. I thought, yeah. I yeah. It was. And, and I don't know what that does to the ability to have a, you know, a, a cross, cross yeah. guard yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Like, that's pretty yeah. important. But boy, there's a lot of hours of the day that's just a jam. Mm -hmm. Sure. Because, uh, you know, I mean, you've, if you haven't yet, your traffic people have yeah, that, 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 that traffic. volume is just yeah. ridiculous. And we try to get out, you know, I live in that area, and a number of others do too, we try to get out onto that. And those left turners coming from the, you know, coming from the north, bog, bog a lot of things down. Okay. So. Yeah, I'll look at what, what we have in our plans. But I know we have the continuous lane tapering north of church, and I don't know if in that taper we already had a left turn pocket or not. I can't remember. The, the last thing. Not according to Google Maps. Yeah. Thank Not, you. I don't mean in the existing condition. I mean oh, in our yeah, plans. plans. I'm sorry. <laughs> but they're evolving. <laughs> the the uh, last, last question I had, you indicated on the, the bicycle improvements and connections slide, the Northern Limits Church with northbound signs uh, guiding riders to, a reg to the regional path. Um, and I thought you said something about a left-hand turn, directed to a left-hand turn lane if they're going northbound. Yeah, so because Which there'll be that, that continuous left turn lane all the way to church, if you're heading northbound on a bike, yeah. you could merge over sure. into that mm -hmm. lane and then wait for a gap to merge onto the regional path. Yeah, okay, that, that's, that's good. Um, that also may give me a little trepidation. Maybe that's where that continuous left-hand turn lane is going to end. And that's where that's that whole discussion we're all and I are having about that left turn pocket. Yeah, coming in. I will um, get clarity on that for you and make sure. I would like to say that going north, then you'd still want that the bicycle left turn. Yeah, sure, yeah. 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 absolutely. Yeah. I wouldn't, okay. I wouldn't do anything to yeah. back away from that, but I'm saying, man, wouldn't it be nice to go another 50 feet? Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Or 100 feet or whatever, yeah. Yeah. Exactly. 200 beyond yeah. the distance you need. The, the yeah, land to is there, safely merge. which we know yeah. that yeah. already. You know, I mean, that to be able to make that a, a turnover yeah, spot to, to help through traffic through. is what we're trying to say. Because yeah. once they stop, it backs up and clear back to Hoffman sometimes. Yeah, they can't get across. Oh, that's, yeah. Okay. There. Yes. So if I could tag one thing on talking about the cycling lane for the cyclists then heading southbound on that pathway, they also need to be able to merge back in. Mm -hmm. and they need to be able to merge back in before the crosswalk. Mm -hmm. And so if there's a cutout placed a couple hundred feet to the north of there that it then allows cyclists to get back into the southbound lane of traffic and then make that merge as opposed to having to get all the way down to the crosswalk and then do sort of an awkward cyclist and pedestrian path cross, that'd be great. So you're concerned about them crossing at the police station driveway? We, we, we've got a plan for getting them when they're heading northbound got sign engine in place for them to merge. The question is then when they're heading southbound, what is the appropriate merging pattern there? Yeah, I will approach that further with the team. The mayor also asked me to pass along on the topic also of the triggered um, lighting, that that be a, a consideration also for the school crossing at Powell Street, excuse me, at Church Street. So the existing school crossing at Church Street to explore what the options would be for a triggered light there. He's under the understanding, and maybe this is incorrect, that if we wanted the triggered lighting system, we wouldn't be able to utilize people as crossing guards. You know, is that correct? I don't know how those two things work together. So that would be a question the mayor would be interested in as well. And then this is outside the scope of the project that you've described, but the school crossing at 51 to the east of 99, when that project comes up, I'm guessing it'll be in partnership with ODOT. So Main Street slash 51, uh, as it goes to the east, the intersection of Main Street 51 and Heffley running north-south is a school crossing. So that um, might be in our next presentation. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's the next one. Yeah, yeah so and we, well, yeah, we, we'll talk about that. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Okay. Go so, ahead, Jesse. One more. Go ahead, Steve. Well, we've talked about a couple streets and Clay has kind of gotten left out of the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> one of the challenges for for people at Clay on either side is making the left turns. Is there, and I know people are going to hate me when I say this, are, but are are there thoughts about making like Clay at 99 right turn only 
both directions and, and not making, not allowing left turns so that you, so that you push your left turn traffic to like Madrona, to Maine, and to Powell. So that now you only have three places where left turns have to execute rather than five. Question. So I don't think I have been party to that discussion, and I don't think it's in our current proposal, but it's something we could look at as well. I mean, I know it's going to be challenging because some of us are going to have to route to other streets, but it's, but there's times when it doesn't. When you're a clay, they have the left turn straight ahead lane, and sometimes you can't go either way because of the way traffic's moving. So that would improve the flow off of clay as well. Right, because if it went right turn only, then you could get people who wanted to execute a right turn easier would come off the of main and right turn onto clay, from clay onto 99. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now, it wouldn't help people that were further north, but if you could find ways to work, like one north of 99, or uh, 51, and one south of 51, that were designated for safer left turns, that were further from, so like I said, if you had Powell and mm -hmm. Madrona, they're far enough away from the intersection that they're not going to get blocked up as much as Clay and Jackson are. Mm -hmm. Okay, we can, we can ask that question yeah, over. Talk about how that might to change the flow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's... Yeah. Jesse? Yeah, so I've got, I've got a question about, um, we're going to go all the way down to Gwynn um, Street, correct? For the bike lanes the and the, the overall project resurfacing. Yes. Are we? Are you going to extend the sidewalks uh, all the way down 99 South from Madrona to Gwynn on both sides? No, I'm sure we're not able to do it, or not planning to do it for, from Madrona to Gwynn, where you have that large ditch yeah. that's receiving a lot of water from the private so that was development. That's my next question. What do we? What is the plan for that large ditch? Basically to leave it there and do as little modification, I think, as we can yeah, do we're, it. We're, we're not trying to infill sidewalks. We're trying to, to bring sidewalks to ADA compliance, which in this case, you know, because there are a few places that they are just not compliant. In order to get through town, we wanted to make sure what we did was bring the ramps up to, to compliance. That's really the genesis of all of the, the sure. work along the yeah, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not concerned about the sidewalk, I'm concerned about the ditch and the berm yeah. that's there and uh, <coughs> if that's going to be torn out at all or lowered or what, what's going to happen. There, I think there are some minor modifications to the ditch and to the stormwater connections along it, but I don't think it's a drastic change at all. We can, we can relay those details yeah, through the staff Yeah. Awesome. Um, and then on the yeah west side of the highway between Madrona and Gwynn, I'll have to check the check the plans. If there's a sidewalk there today, which I think there, there might be, yeah, yeah there is. I think we're like Tim said, looking at all the ramps and making sure that they're mm -hmm. upgraded and Perfect. so forth. Yeah. Any other questions? So maybe I've got one, and that would be it. So there's nothing happening clear beyond towards Bymart and uh, I guess it'd be the retirement area there, yeah, it retirement village. It's we're we're paving somewhere. to just paving. past Gwynn Street at the city limit mm -hmm. and we're striking bike lanes to Gwynn Street and doing ramp improvements. And there side, may be yeah. some modifications to planter strips on the west side as well. I need to look at the details south of Madrona for you. Will, we, will you guys put in at Gwynn Street because eventually that's going to be a uh, through street on the opposite side, what's that, east side of, of the highway, um, where the, the church, between the church and the, the housing, um, the house is there. Are, we, are you going to finish that intersection with ramps going east on Gwynn Street? So when we do get a street in there, it's, it's set. That's an interesting question because last time we came out for a meeting, we drove the length of the project and we noticed that there was some development starting back behind the church and we were going to ask the city what what the plan was if they were going to punch that through. Quite a bit of development now. It's, it's quite so, substantial. So yeah, we can we can look at least at what your, what your plans and timing are and see how to coordinate those projects. Yeah. 
I don't know. I'd be remiss if, as Ari Van Dray didn't say, we are already uh, over budget. <laughs> yeah, I don't know that we can include it, but so, we can at least so start So, scope increase is going to be a challenge. <laughs> I guess that's my. Yeah. Having included the arch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Exactly. You, can tell, you can tell we've had quite a few discussions about this. This yeah. is kind of questions. Great. Okay, other questions from council? No, I think we have some public comment. Okay, so I've got at least one person. Uh, Mike, is it Caleb? Yes. Yeah. Would you like to come? Yeah, come to the, yeah. Name the city for the record. And My name's Mike Califf. Uh I live uh, outside of Independence in the rural area, and I'm here this evening representing uh, Polk County Farm Bureau. Um, our concern tonight is, is uh, what this project is gonna do with uh, the movement of farm equipment through Monmouth. Um, we've seen what happened in downtown Independence. Um, that's a real bottleneck. It's a very dangerous, uh, in that case, only a block long, but uh, uh, we need to look at that too because that stuff has to move up and down the road somewhere. So you, you indicated on your diagram that the travel lane was 12 feet. That, that's not anywhere near out. Well, it, it, there's also the, that 16 foot center lane that, that with no obstructions through it. In fact, I was going to comment on the, the potential of a pedestrian refuge. That, that creates a potential problem to, to through, mm. through movement mm. of large vehicles. Mm. You know, I mean, we're, we're, not, we're not trying to kill any project here, but we just want to make sure yeah. that we're thinking about this so that we don't get in the middle of it and realize that, that we've made a mistake. No, I, I, I fully understand. And 99 is, a, is obviously a, a... It's it's one of the the main corridors. Uh, there's obviously nothing uh, to the to the east uh, until you get to Independence, and it is used um, very carefully. But uh, uh, I don't even know if there are any possibilities coming to the west from 99 to to bypass if, if that was necessary, but uh, um, that I suppose could be a possibility, but we need to consider what we're gonna do and to make sure that, that <laughs> something is gonna work. Because uh, that equipment's gotta, gotta move. Yeah, the current design doesn't prohibit movement of large vehicles. You would say, you would say that it would be uh, uh, um, as open as it is now as far as being able to get that equipment through there. Yeah, or even a little bit wider in the future with Because Because you're gonna need at least at least sixteen feet. Um I mean you've got you've got headers on combines well, that are yeah. like the typical section back up. Yeah, let me back up. So curb to curb you mm -hmm. have twenty four forty 52 feet curb to curb with no obstructions and and keep in mind if you're centered on the 12 foot lane you're you're uh <laughs> if you're saying 16 feet four feet either way mm -hmm. or, or that you're still well within <laughs> yours on the travel if you well want. I get. <laughs> yeah I, and and I'm not you know I'm not doubting if you're just you're saying I'm just I'm just asking the yeah, question right, that right. we have no, considered that and you feel comfortable with that uh, uh, with that um, the, the amount of room that's there. Yeah. I, the answer is yes, but we will double check just to make sure okay. that, that over the full length we aren't adding any obstruction. Unfortunately, this stuff gets gets bigger and bigger. At some point, there's going to be a there's going to be a stop, but. Uh, I'm not sure we're quite there yet. I understand. Okay. All right. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. Thanks. Good. Others? Okay. Come up. I didn't check because I didn't expect saying. I'm Bill Horner, a resident of uh, Monmouth, and I want to talk a, a little bit about the planting, uh, the the landscaping, mm -hmm. and not the trees, but the ground cover. Wouldn't it be better to go with the kinkinnic, which I understand is not quite drought resistant, but it doesn't take much water, doesn't take any mowing where your grass is going to take mowing, 
and um, and watering and I guess mm -hmm. irrigation. Yeah, ODOT is highly supportive of that alternative. And it's a native plant. We, we brought it to the city as an option, so we're okay. just waiting for more feedback from the city okay. if they want that direction. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks Beth. Others? Um, John, I, yeah. uh, that, uh, those comments just brought this to mind. You know, we're, we're <coughs> have been requested and um, consider enhanced landscaping. Uh, for this project, what would that entail? If we were to provide an extra $180,000 for enhanced landscaping. This is already kind of an enhanced landscape compared to what we usually do on our highways where we just seed and mulch. Yeah. Oh, so, 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 so trees maybe, so maybe trees that's and ground already covers been of that's high, already been included up higher on the whole caliber yeah. have yeah. Of over 140,000 are already included in that. Yeah, okay, that's, that, that answers the question. So. so you said it is the money that we, we talked about. Yeah, it is part of the Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Thanks for asking that. Though. I was concerned too. Great, excited. Thank you. Yeah. Hope you hear some more to get here. Super. And uh, again, Julie is not the, the project leader on this next phase. In fact, she, uh, she could not make it here tonight. Um, we, we really haven't started this project yet. We, we've scoped it, we've uh, determined what it, it, it's going to be, uh, but we really are not probably gonna be forming the team and, and getting going on it until probably late this summer. August is what our schedule shows to, to kind of kick it off. But to take you back to when it was first uh, selected in, and uh, worked its way through the, the selection process, what we're gonna be doing is uh, 1,600 feet of sidewalk and improvements on both sides of, of Hefley, or, or 51 from Hefley to Maine. And uh, it'll bring it up to, to standards that, that center, that standard is uh, curb and gutters both sides, bike lanes, and a, and a center left turn lane, again, to meet your uh, standards for that uh, main arterial, and it also meets our highway standards. So. Right now, again, we're, we've just got the, the scoping estimate and, and your contribution, and then again, as I show, we'll, we'll kick it off late this summer. Uh, we haven't done much more than gone out and, and, and improved our estimates, and that's really all we've done with the project. But I do want to say we will be looking at what that does to bike lanes, et cetera, along there, and, and obviously there's a link. Uh, we do show the construction year is 19, that's a year after the other one. There was maybe a year and a half or a little bit longer ago, uh, we were talking with, with Scott and Russ about, do we want those done at the same time? Do we want them separated? Uh, frankly, from because of the right-of-way acquisition, it kind of set the schedule for that one. I think that's gonna be the case with this one too. So the year separation that we've got in there now would be difficult to compress because of the the acquisition that will probably have to occur along both sides of the street there. So, unfortunately, I think we're stuck with the one-year separation in, in the projects. The, there's both pros and cons with, with doing, you know, you can do it all at once or you can kind of nibble along. What we do try and do uh, is very much acknowledge that we impact the, the lives and operation of the, of the city and the folks that live there. So staging of the project, and of, in fact, of Julie's project and this project will both really do a tremendous amount to try and make sure we keep things moving and keep things flowing while, while it's under construction. That's obviously a key element of what we do. Great. Okay, questions? Go ahead and come back out here. On, fit, on the 51 route, that, now that's three blocks from 99. Therefore, that school crossing, and we don't know if that has an effect, whether if you have the blinking, the manual, turn on the blinking lights, or does that affect the school crossing? We need to know that. If not, isn't that a prime place for the blinking the lights? Rapid flash yep. Blinking, yep. For yep. pedestrians, because right. that is a, a hard corner there. You yep. see when you come over the hill, and then we'll have 
bike lanes almost all the way to Independence, but we'll only have we'll have three blocks that won't have bike lanes on 51. Yeah, and that was actually one of the selling points of this this yeah. project was to try and improve that connectivity. Uh, obviously, the the questions around the interaction of school crossings and the rapid flash and beacon will kind of work through both projects because neither of us know what the answer to that is either. We have to find out. Okay. Thank you. Go ahead. Yeah, mine's just uh, a timing um, because 51 is uh, one of our major events of the year, 4th of July. Mm -hmm. That's probably going to be prime <coughs> construction time. So I was just a little heads up on mm -hmm. yeah. out of stage for that one. Just well, keep one lane, that's all. Well, <laughs> and, and mm -hmm. we often, and I, I'm not committing to that in, in the case of this project, but, but we often work around major events where, where we'll plan with the contractor and build it into the contract to shut down during that thing and open it up as much as you can so that you can have those major events sort of things. We do that regularly on projects elsewhere, so it, it'll certainly be discussed as we move into this one. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm a little confused on the, um, on the 51 project East Main. Mm -hmm. we're, we're referencing Heffley, um, you know, but then the map, on, uh, you know, that that map shows well around the corner. Heffley is really... So know, East Main, with, ah, oh, if you go back to the map. That's what I was trying to do. <laughs> when I was, since I don't know this project that well, I was researching last week, I thought this was labeled as it East is. Main, so I wasn't sure if this was the, Alan, do you remember, was this the norm terminus of the project? I don't remember. Um, there's also, it looked like a gap with the sidewalk up to this point, so that's why I put the arrow there. I wasn't sure if that was about 1,600 feet. There, but there's existing bike lane that picks up about where your first, uh, where your where And your as I recall, now. the intention was to pick it up on that. To finish the sidewalk. Uh, around the curve. Right. It's right. kind of silly to right. make it the Wild West 50 feet there. And yeah, right. exactly. Right. And and you see, that's, that's uh, you know, Heffley's on top of the hill. Heffley is down here where this, this other arrow was, so I believe that's the other band. That's the start point. Yeah, right, right. somewhere right. in that intersection in the city. Yes. So between the arrows is the... And we're okay beyond that, yes. Okay, yes. I understand. I was thinking, yeah. Never mind. Thank you. Questions? Yes. That's Heffley. That's Heffley. That's Heffley. That's Heffley. That's when you that's so <laughs> what's the reason for not going all the way to the highway? Ninety nine. Stopping at Heffley. Frankly we'd have the rest of the street section was okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The goal yeah. was to get yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Say we were we were yeah. connecting yeah. to where there was already sidewalks. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank Do you have any quick questions from the audience on that particular part of the project? Okay. Yeah, that completes the streets. Thank you so much. Thank you very much yeah. for your presentation. Thank you for we'll having me. Appreciate it. Julie and Tim for being here. Right. Finish it up. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the piece around. So, it's not that great. Okay, next thing on our agenda is mayor's report, and um, he's out of state at this point in time. I think he's hoping to be back Wednesday evening, uh, John is. So uh, he attended the COG dinner, and several of us attended the COG dinner, Scott, and Steve, and I. Um, there was also a mayor's breakfast, he said. They met Friday, and they talked quite a bit about Hoffman Road, east of 99. Um, so. That's a continuing subject. Uh, but then, yeah, those were the main two things that he had. Board, and the boards and commission stuff, appointments he said he would bring uh, to us when he got back. So that's basically the mayor's report for this evening. Uh, moving to council uh, representation of boards and commissions. Looks like I've got the first one, senior center. Uh, maybe a couple highlights. Um, See breakfast uh, this Saturday on the 6th from 8.30 to 10.30 again. Uh, at the meeting we met on January 26th and the friends agreed to 
commit a thousand dollars towards the PA system. Um, they've kind of worked through all their goals for this last uh, couple of years and they've completed most of the things they had on their list so they're now brainstorming another set so that was one of the things they spent quite a bit of time on. Um, and the medical equipment, they're back in business on that and they've got a, a good release form in place and the equipment becomes the other individuals once they get done. So that's, that's good to have that kind of transmittal process in place. And I think that concludes my highlights for the Senior Center for this past month. Questions? Any updates on the expansion? Uh, yes, that's true. Uh, so it came in about a hundred thousand high and so um, they really haven't worked through how they're going to try to narrow it. They're going to work with the contractor and stuff and see if they can figure out a way to make, make piece that back together yet. So okay, just nothing to report yet. Nothing to report yet as Thank far you. as anything that's of pertinence directly that they've, they haven't made any decisions on it yet. Let's put it that way. Okay, thanks. Um, okay, Councillor Milligan. Arts and Culture Arts and Cult Commission uh, did not have a meeting this past Thursday night. Okay, thanks. No report. Uh, Councillor Johnson, Planning Commission? Yeah, they met uh, two times here in, in, the, in the month of January. And on the second one, we were back at uh, working on the uh, chickens at, uh, for PUD. And I think they've got that pretty well figured out and we'll present it to the City Council. There was a lot of discussion on that. Same thing was uh, uh, Mark presented a pretty good program of what the the tree advisory board did and how it tied in with the uh, planning commission and so that uh, people understood about trees and, and the area that you were designing or the public stuff for trees. So and uh, and give a good report on how many trees we put in, just like what we've heard and uh, how many planted we've had in the last ten years or eight years or whatever. So that's what happened at the planning commission. Great, thank you. Uh, Councilor Kerry, my name. Uh, Mr. Chair, members of the board, uh, council, my net met on uh, my net board met on uh, January 28th, and uh, <clears throat> you know went through a variety of, of uh, reports on the normal agenda items of the financial committee and, uh, and which is doing yeoman's work by the way. Um, we did get a, a financial report and, and MyNet continues to be stable in its finances in terms of, you know, the operational expenses are, are, are consistent with revenues uh, and that has become a, a pretty significant pattern. Now, how far they can go beyond that, of course, is part of the, um, part of the question. <clears throat> um, there were a couple of, of action items. One, um, the, they requested, um, the Minot Management through the Finance Committee uh, requested a, um, a rate increase for video uh, that reflects the the increase they're getting from the providers. And uh, so, in order to stay even, um, you know, revenue-wise, relative to our expenses in that area, um, uh, we approved an 11 percent uh, increase uh, in that. And that doesn't do anything to help us. Uh, to help my net, it simply it goes to cover the increase of the, the content provided. Uh, NBC is, is chief among them uh, in, in terms of what they're they're pushing out. So you know we're sort of we're sort of a, a caught a little bit. You know we're at the mercy of the of the providers. Uh, there was an agenda item to discuss a purchase service model, um, and um, the presentation that we had was was sort of disjointed and never really got off the ground um, and so and, and it it attracted uh, very limited interest from the the, the members of the, of the board um, uh, there was consensus that we would sort of take this off and not not have the general manager work on any of the other things any of the other, the other things that were related to, um, uh, well, no, that's not not accurate. Uh, the purchase service model is hard to get my, it's hard for me to get my hands around. I was anticipating conversation. We didn't have any. It was pulled basically uh, for, for lack of interest. Um, you know, I was the dissenting, well, I was the one that was not within the consensus on that. There was no actual vote on that, I suppose. 
Um, so I don't know what the status uh, of that is. There are a number of other initiatives, however, that they are undertaking, management is undertaking, uh, that can serve as revenue uh, generators. Um, and, and what those are, um, they've yet to really reveal. Some of it, there's some confidentiality in some of it, um, but um, uh, so, so I'd anticipated a discussion on some of the options there and uh, never, never, never got to that. Um, our next meeting is February 25th and we, rather than sort of alternate back and forth as we've done, it's a, it's a good situation. Henry Hill Education Service Center, the old Henry Hill Elementary is where we're meeting, good place to meet and uh, so we're going to continue to have our meetings there. That's at 7.30 uh, in the morning and by the way, there was no, I don't know, I don't know why, uh, there was no video uh, recording of the, uh, of the January meeting. Uh, they weren't there, so I, I don't know. Um, there's been nothing to preclude them, and there must have been a conflict or something, so we didn't have that. That concludes my report. Thank you. Uh, Committee so announcements? Oh, okay, quick question. question, John. Uh, do you anticipate getting those um, other options for the initiatives to increase revenue? Are, 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 is your board not getting those, or is it just no, the No, that, those are forming at the moment. Okay. Those are forming. And you anticipate? And, and, and yeah, and, and, it, and it, it would relate to things like data storage, and, you know, large quantities of, you know, storing data and, and, and you know, for other agencies or other entities. Um, among other things, mm -hmm. uh, but th they're working on those. Um, I'm told, or you know, we're told, and I, and I believe they are. Good. Okay, thank you. Uh, community announcements. You're getting quiet. No, none, I guess. City manager's report. Scott. Yeah, please. if I could, if I could point you to the quarterly report. Okay, we'll go with that. We'll go over the, the key council goals. The uh, obtained street funding was the first one on there. We did have the citizen task force work. We haven't been able to put any effort into that with other projects going in the summer, but actually next meeting, we're gonna bring you back some options on how to, how to construct that. We had a recommendation from our advisory committee, talked to a consultant through about some options on how you can approach that and kind of build the methodology mm -hmm. from this point. So we'll bring you back that at next meeting. The uh, vision engagement process, we got that completed. That was very good. I can also note that uh, going forward, all of the committees are activated and have already met. So all those groups are going, and that's going very well. Let's see what we come up with there. The uh, senior center expansion, we said that the, uh, oh good, it's a project. That's a always nice. It's always nice when we have a <laughs> um, Yeah, so that came in our budget. We're still sorting through working with a building official, our, our architect, um, staff, trying to work to see how we can go with that. So we're not, yeah, we don't have much to report on where we are. Uh, we haven't hit the magic bullet. Um, next one, the determined method for improving City Hall facility, that's just been deferred new activity. And the Main Street Park Amphitheater, even with the weather related issues, they're, they're comfortable with schedule. They, they still are, they're still moving along, we're actually getting some activity on now and they're still comfortable, they're in good shape. And with that, just remember there's always all the other departments, as we said, there's lots of things going on in all the departments, that's consistent for our organization and if you have any questions, just let me know. Questions, Scott? I know that's a big savings to go to the LED, you know, all the week, tremendous amount. What does it cost us to get that savings? Sometime when you could you bring that back? Yeah, to yeah the, you bet. Yeah, we we can talk about that. You know, I mean, yeah. we, we're saving thirty-seven thousand yeah. a year on the power cost. But yeah. what did it cost us to get to that point? That's yeah. what I'm saying. Yeah, you bet. That's yeah, yeah. more informative would be a break-even point. Is how how long yeah. those yeah. lights have yeah. individual yeah. lightnings yeah. to be in service yeah. before we see a break-even. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It, it's interesting just to note, I was in a prior community, we shifted from um, sodium vapor to hyper, no, sodium to, I can't remember the names, but yeah, two did. different styles, and we did it, and actually at that point, it was like a two and a half year payback, it was pretty good, so right. um, that was, that was a while back, because old technologies. Councilor here. Uh, you know, one of the things, and, and I meant to mention, uh, mention it when the ODOT people were here, uh, and, and they referenced the, um, uh, you know, our community engagement interest in um, bicycle and pedestrian friendly things and particularly with respect to bike you know if we get to the point which we've talked about some bike corridors 
you know, the Sharrows and, and, and all of that sort of thing. I'm hoping, given that we're looking at the 2018 um, construction on the, you know, on the main upgrade on 99, if we had input into things on how we could integrate what they have into what we would like, you know, or how we could match up with what it would be the most likely. But we need to make sure we're communicating on that so we can, you know, if there's a, a, a way to make it seamless, it would be great. Right. We will. Yeah. We're good? Yep. Scott, thank you. Okay, citizen comments. If there's anything that it would be items that are not on the agenda. Very not or seeing none. Let's move on then. Okay, we're moving to the business agenda. And the first one is to adopt miscellaneous administrative fees and repealing conflicting provisions. Is this one yours, Phyllis? Okay. Mayor and Council, this is basically a housekeeping item <clears throat> because when we updated our administrative fee resolution in January 2015, we did not bring the taxi cab information forward. This puts it all in one place so that we don't have to refer back to two or three different resolutions to see everything that the fees are for. So that's basically what it's for. Questions of Phyllis? see, this would be resolution 1810. If somebody wants to propose a motion. I'll propose. I move that we adopt resolution 1810, a resolution adopting miscellaneous administrative and repealing conflicting provisions. Is there a second? Second. Second. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion before we move on? Okay, moved and seconded that we approve the resolution 1810. Although, let's see, this should be a roll call, wouldn't it, Phyllis? Yes. Okay, could you call the roll call? Councilor Schaefer? Aye. Councilor Carey? Aye. Councilor Guthrie? Aye. Councilor Johnson? Aye. Councilor Milligan? Aye. Thank you. Mm -hmm. okay, motion passes unanimously. Yeah, the, the photocopies are all the same price now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, moving to our next business agenda item. So, an ordinance adopting legislative amendment 15 01. This is a second reading. And this one marks. Yeah, members of the council, this is the second reading of the ordinance that would uh, amend the city's subdivision code to include that require that subdividers provide a one year warranty bond or similar security uh, as approved by the city of Monmouth on all public improvements and landscaping and public rights of way. This is your second reading. Excellent. You have to answer any questions you may have. Questions? Discussion? Well, I, just comment. We we had we had fairly, fairly extensive conversation on this last go around. So, if this moves quickly through, it, it, it's not because it's not had considerable conversation and uh, vetted it right. pretty carefully. Right. <clears throat> this would be Ordinance 1363. You can read that by title. Read it by title? Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, ordinance 1363, an ordinance amending Section 17.15.170 of the Monmouth City Code relating to the giving of a warranty bond or other security for certain public improvements and landscaping installed in the public right of way. And is that a roll call vote yeah, too? Uh -huh. Okay. And so is that the motion or? That's the, oh, yeah, that, that's the, I guess you still need a motion. Yeah. 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 Uh -huh. Okay. What's, what's the number? 1362. We do approve resolution 1362. Three. Three. Sorry. <laughs> second. Second. Okay. We moved to and seconded that we approve uh, ordinance 1363. Roll call. Phyllis? Councilor Johnson. Aye. Councilor Milligan. Aye. Councilor Guthrie. Aye. Councilor Schaefer? Aye. Councilor Carey? Aye. Okay, motion carries unanimously. Thank you. Let's see. What's next? Council comments. Just a reminder that in looking at the joint meeting with the City of Independence, our next one would be scheduled on a fifth Tuesday, March 29th, per the arrangements made at our last joint meeting. And so this is simply a reminder that at this point we should be expecting the city managers and the mayors to be getting together and coming up with a process to set the agenda. Excellent. Other comments? 
March 29th. <clears throat> okay, hearing none, I would entertain a motion to adjourn from here to, I'm thinking, the back uh, for our work session. So moved. So adjourn. Yeah. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Thanks.